really would probably so if, if you're okay with it we were thinking since the design design work is basically done mm -hmm. that we could just go ahead and still purchase, purchase those files yeah. mm -hmm. as kind of a physical item and then enter into a more in-depth contract for the actual execution. with whoever the contractor is Signs. Right. Yeah. And an additional contract with any more services from fuel if we need it. Sure. Changes. So, um, that sounds reasonable. I don't okay. know. Anyone else? No, that sounds, yeah. Judy or, or her no, that's, That sounds fine. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. Do you need any um, approval from the committee to move forward or the commission to move forward with that plan? No, I think as long as there's a consensus, then we can put something together more formal. Okay. Um, I just wanted you to be prepared that it probably. It will be a long sure. contract because I think you know most of the things that we put in there <clears throat> for the risk. That's you know we know what the it's done and we're happy with it. So yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Less complexity. <so. laughs> All right. Any other discussion on the signage? <clears throat> uh, if not, we can move to the FAA and DOT projects. All right. I'm so happy this is on the agenda. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, up first, obstruction mitigation phase one. Our contractor has submitted paperwork. We've got final pay. I know there's a little bit of, of final contract uh, work that we have to do with the FAA to close the grants out, but uh, work is done. Documents are in. Uh, we are ready to accept both of these phases of the project is complete. Uh, phase one. If you look at the resolution, had a final price of four hundred and uh, just under four hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars, and that was part of uh, part of the changes. Was there was one property owner um, over here? I don't exactly remember which one off the top of my head that uh, they had like six trees that they trimmed themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, it was just an adjustment for quantities of sod and seed stuff like that that just weren't used that were over budgeted for in the. Uh, in the original contract. So we get that extra 42,000. Well, no. no. We, we just don't uh, pay it out. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> doesn't mean we get to keep the money because no. 90% yeah. of it's the FAA's money. Uh, yeah. yeah. What a shame. Okay, well, <laughs> I move that we approve a resolution accepting the work for the obstruction mitigation project phase one. I second. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Chris? Aye. Warren? Aye. Scott? Aye. Unfortunately, no, they, unfortunately they, they can't vote. No, they, they can. can. They just can't. They don't count as the quorum. We talked oh, about that. Oh, okay. So they can vote. Okay. Okay. So Electra. Aye. And Judy. Aye. All right. So we do count for the vote. They don't count for the quorum. Yeah. That's that's good enough. That's correct. Yeah. I guess we can rotate. Isn't that neat? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I love the state of Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the first one. Um, phase two, similar situation. Stuff is in. Um, this one had a, a actually an increase because we added trees at the back end of it. Um, there were a bunch of trees that were over here um, at the end of 2.5. So this one went from an original contract of 208 up to 220. Uh, um, but again, everything's done, paperwork's in, and we're ready to close this thing out and move on. All right. Any discussion? I move that we. Uh... Approve resolution accepting the work for the mitigation project phase two. I second. All right, roll call. This time we'll start online. Electra. Aye. Judy. Aye. Chris. Aye. Warren. Aye. Scott. Aye. Resolution Aye. approved. All right. Number three, uh, our next item next Runway time. 725 Rehab East End. So this one is beginning the, the uh, bidding process that we just went through for the threshold relocation for our uh, first phase of runway rehab. Um, plan inspects are right here, <laughs> lots of copies. Um, so uh, basically what it's doing is taking from the concrete end to uh, uh, just short of the intersection and we're crack sealing, uh, joint repair, maybe uh, there's a couple of miscellaneous panel repairs there's right there. only two panel repairs. Yeah. The um, only changes from what we did last spring were dates, and then I strengthened the language to have them coordinate with the threshold relocation people. I basically gave them not enough time to do the project that they had to me. <laughs> they do coordinate that they don't have to do their own traffic control, they don't have to respray, they don't have to do any of that stuff. So it really, they 
it's a good course then to thank you. Mm, yeah, we, we did what we could to yeah, mesh all of that. it as frictionless as possible, That's right? Cool. And as compact in time as possible. Very incentive coordinate. So what was the downtime at the end of uh, I gave them a couple of extra days because there's there's a possibility they might need a couple, but I think I only gave them five that total days. And I said that any time you were working on the other projects go on, I'm not going to count against you. Yes, for five days of downtime. So they got they've got five extra days specific to this, and then the threshold relocation had, I don't remember what we had for that. And in both of them, they're open every night. Now there there's a couple days they're going to be when they're painting that they can't open at night because maybe trying to land on the runway without proper paint markings. And there's a couple of days that they will have to tear out and put in patches so we don't want them landing on soft concrete. But for when they're when they're just doing the striping, uh, it's to be open every night. So at the end of the day, uh, it reopens for night when they're just doing crack sealing or when they're are replacing lights along the side. So like a maximum closed time of ten days total. Um, I think it was for the nine or seventy five. I think for the electrical one, it was more than that. It was a, a total of twenty working days. But sounds right. Uh, a lot of yeah. How many days does that impact? Uh, three, zero, one, two. Uh, six hours. Yeah, six hours total. It doesn't help you a lot on your charters, but yeah, so twenty days. But it might be less than that. It, it could be, be less than that. I mean, it's just um, <clears throat> sure. Okay. Can you land any of your jets on three zero? Yeah, yeah. We, the weather's right, yeah. Yeah. which is a good time of year to do that. Right. Yeah. But we don't like taking off on the three zero. Right. 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 Take off on one two. It usually off works. One two, especially if you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not like we can take off on three zero. It's just not being a good neighbor. You, you don't see it in the office. <laughs> <happening. laughs> yeah. Well, with those trees gone. For the trees gone. <laughs> yeah, it's just loud too. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you're putting you're putting the fuel to it to get out of there. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the so, twenty. So just real quick. So the twenty. Following up on Matt's comment, the twenty days. That also includes some nights that are th those twenty days will have some nights that are open, about right? Five nights that are closed because of the markings. Okay. Yeah, most of the time they're just they're going to be just working close enough to run away. We can't legally yeah, open yeah. during the day. So if I'm understanding correctly, you may not be able to land during the day, but if you needed to move stuff around at night, For you could. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. That's unless, better than total. Unless the lights aren't on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who needs lights? All right. So that one's another resolution. This sets the public hearing for the plans and specs for the next meeting, February 10th. And then we would open bids um, March 3rd. I think it's my turn, Chris. So I move that we approve a resolution setting a public hearing on February 10th, 2022. For the plan specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the construction of the runway 725 rehabilitation east end project. And. <laughs> and directing the city clerk to publish notice of set hearing and directing the chairperson to place said plans on file for public inspection. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Roll call. Warren? Aye. Chris? Aye. Electra? Aye. Judy? Aye. Scott, I resolution approved. Okay. And the last one on the list, uh, runway seven two, uh, runway two five threshold relocation. We opened bids last week. Bids were phenomenal. Uh, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did you did you look at it? No, I didn't. I have no, 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 I, I, no. I looked at the numbers. I was talking to uh, Mike today. I'm like, how how did we manage this? That's great. Um, the lowest responsible, uh, responsive bid is New Miller Electric. They've done work on the airport, so uh, they're a firm we're familiar with already. Uh, they have a base bid of $440,811. But as part of this project, uh, we have talked to the FAA. Uh, one of the things that happens with this is FAA also concurs with the award. We don't have that quite yet, so we will not okay. sign contracts until we get that. But uh, the conversation I had with the FAA, they seemed to believe with the pricing we got, uh, they would participate in the, the uh, lighting and marking of the entire runway. Great. With LEDs. LEDs. Hooray. Hooray. 
So our recommendation, Carl's recommendation, and I fully support it, is to award all of the uh, alternates um, that also would make the decision that the LED lighting does not have those uh, electric heaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, so we're not ready to award the contract yet, though. So we don't. We can we can award the contract. We're just not going to sign. Uh, sign. No, so the, the okay. commission can award it. Uh, so we're we just, it we're just sort of setting the stage at this point. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that's what the resolution states. So uh, there's a couple of conditions in there where uh, they, you know, do get their pay, uh, performance and insurance bonds mm -hmm. and all of that fun mm -hmm. stuff. And then uh, we also get the concurrence in the oh, award yeah. from the FAA. It's so. 2B. How's that? Okay. All right. So it's my turn. Yep. yep. Uh, I move that we. Uh, Consider a resolution accepting bids and awarding contract for the runway 25 threshold relocation project. Second. Oh, <laughs> Judy jumped in. Second. Was that Judy? I thought that was Electra. No, nope. Judy. Judy. <laughs> it was Judy. <laughs> we'll take roll call. Judy. Okay. Yes. Hi. Electra. Hi. Warren. Hi. Chris. Yes. Scott. Hi. Okay. That is that. Um, South T hangar infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to defer to Carl because I don't know exactly where they are. I know our focus has certainly been on the runway side of things mm -hmm. uh, for the last month, but in general, I know that's one of the projects we've got. The focus has been on the FAA because they moved the deadline up a month on this year. So we have to work earlier on that one. Um, we, we have gotten work done on it, on the uh, work done on the South T, but I don't have anything. We should be able to have some pretty pretty decent stuff at the next meeting. Yeah, all that's okay. Cool. And that's a good segue into the bipartisan infrastructure bill. So um, a few months ago, the Congress passed and the president signed the bipartisan infrastructure bill for the first time since I've seen it, uh, seen any major legislation. Uh, there is money dedicated to airports and the airport system, and there's a direct allocation to individual airports. So as I understand the program for the next five years, we will be allocated $295,000 a year. Um, that law is being at, at the moment, the FAA is kind of figuring out their guidelines on how to uh, craft everything, uh, um, uh, guidelines for using the money. Mm -hmm. But the law in general is uh, runways, taxiways, sustainability, um, Stuff like that. Not hangers. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Um, I, I was able to sit on a webinar uh, before Christmas uh, where I, it was shortly after they announced the, the numbers uh, to individual airports. They did a webinar, which is minorly useful. Um, generally speaking, it's going to be uh, similar to the AIP program. Yeah. So the problem with that is in the AIP program, they, they allow for revenue generating stuff like hangers, things like that. Mm -hmm. However, you have to sign a like a five-year statement saying all of your airside needs are done. Mm -hmm. And for the next five years, you're not asking for any money for airside needs, which, which is not happening. Not happening. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> but um, <laughs> with one of those things being sustainability, I think that really gives a boost to our solar panel project mm -hmm. again and probably brings that off the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, because for $300,000, those early numbers bought the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we can actually then we'll benefit, benefit from all of those savings immediately. And this, this would be buying outright, not yeah. through some. Right. Right. Correct. I want to lend lease. Is yeah, not, not the right phrase. Uh, rent, rent to own. Yeah, that, power yeah. purchase agreement. Yeah, is yeah. what, is what they were. Rent to own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll build it for you and charge you more than it's worth. <laughs> so, I am anticipating once FAA does get that guidance out, I think that project would certainly be 
high on our list. Oh, yeah. Um, after that, it's going to be more of what the guidelines actually say on what we can build. Mm -hmm. But other opportunities are our aircraft parking area. Uh, sure. Hangers are high on my list, especially if there's something that's eligible that we don't have to sign the five year statement saying we don't need other right. stuff. Like hangar doors? Uh, well, I, I'm looking for big ticket projects. Okay. So, um some of those like the hangar doors the other half of the hangar doors are probably too small mm -hmm. um but uh that doesn't mean we can't look at something like that and try to pull multiple things sure. together sure. uh outside of that it's going to be uh um you know just looking down the projects that we have um you, you figure if one year one at three hundred thousand dollars is done with the solar panel mm -hmm. so you got four years left at 300 that's mm -hmm. 1.2 million of project dollars that we can throw at something and, and, and a 90 I mean, match um it, it's a, it's structured to be a 90 10 so we'd have to come up with 120 thousand, right um which i'm 99 percent sure the city would be able to help us out with yeah. um, in some fashion because i can't see us turning away a million dollars for <laughs> not uh yeah I mean, generally the the money people are, are wise <laughs> That's cool. um, um but yeah beyond that it, it's it's going to become uh, a little bit of having to wait for the guidance from the fa to know exactly how this uh program is getting tailored to what other projects might fit best but i wanted to a let the commission know that that was on the horizon and certainly i mean if there's other thoughts if there's other projects um, that we've had on the back burner. And it's probably going to be a good time to talk about them. Yeah. So when do you think we'll have the guidance on that? Do you know? Uh, at the time, at the time of the webinar, the the FAA was talking about three months. So um, so that would be April. somewhere April March. Okay. So February, March April. Yeah, March April. Yeah. Um, what I'm thinking is that. Once we've got the guidance, uh, maybe you could come to the commission with your list and we could have a discussion about priority. Yeah, yeah. well, and, yeah, I think so. And, and what's not clear to me based on what you said is, um, are we going after wish list items or are we going after things that we would have gone to the FAA for any way that would have likely been approved? Well, for, for this one, I would certainly not go to anything else that the FAA would Right. realistically approved so yeah. so things like things yeah. like parallel taxiway for that one, one two, three, zero. that one could be a possibility only because with with the, our traffic that parallel taxiway rates low on the, okay. the faa scale okay. um, i'm not saying it wouldn't get funded but it's one of those things that might have a challenge to get funded yeah. really. so yeah that's when we're we'd have to save up money um, our entitlement money to boost yeah. our chances of getting the rest of that and really you'll need the taxiway out to the end of uh, one two right yes. i mean three zero is no big deal yeah yeah one two one three four yeah for takeoff yeah. i don't need it for landing i need it for takeoff that's all you can come up and talk yeah. um, do, we, do we need to be thinking about the the main light that's out there too i mean isn't that yeah, the new beacon yeah i was gonna mention yeah, yeah well, we, i talked to carl about that last time Just, but, um one thing and i'm not don't mean to interrupt anything, but mm -hmm. I did talk with Jeff and Anthony. Uh, you know, Jeff's our planner and Anthony's our engineer. Um, and we're actually using it down in Washington to do some work, but they do require uh, we were going to combine the funds and and be able to move up runway lighting by a year. And they said, well, let's do it this way. Let's do the your entitlement for the runway lighting, and then we'll put the packies and reels onto the BIL fund. They want to right now they you have to keep them in separate, or at least their understanding, and they felt comfortable enough to move ahead this way, was if you have two different totally separate uh, items of work that you can separate by uh, divisions or whatever, mm -hmm. then you can fund it. It'll be two separate grants. So it has to be submitted as a PIP grant and a BIL grant. Um, so for example, say, say you wanted to use it for your parking to expand it. You said, let's do one big project We'll use our entitlements, and we'll use, and maybe it won't just um, work. It won't compete well for discretionary funds. Mm -hmm. But you want to use your entitlements and use your BIL money uh, 
well, the hope is that we can go ahead and combine several years of BIO money into a bigger project. And I, at least that's the way we think it's going to go. But again, we don't know for sure. Yeah, that so was that was my we, question. Is it cumulative and you can spend it all at once or is it? I think we think so. I mean, and the fact that it's already been appropriated, we're hopeful that you might even be able to borrow ahead and not have to wait until you've saved it up to, you know, say, but now we don't know that. So yeah, long. parallel to actually the whole length of that runway would be, I imagine, very expensive. You don't need the whole but, length, though. You just need from our alpha out to, is it the alpha taxiway out to the end of one, two, and that would do it. It would help. Okay, so just, just that little bit. From, right. What do we have in the master plan? The master plan, I believe we have two separate ends, like the middle is missing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we don't have a full so, parallel, but we have from, from Alpha North mm -hmm. and then from this one south. Okay. Might be nice to have one on the end of three zero if we're going to be extending three zero. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, if we're extending See, it. See, that might you've got that programmed already in the mm -hmm. extension of three zero. So you might be able to be, use the BIL. You could say, okay, we're going to do the taxiway down to from here from Bravo, to there. Bravo, and then you, you could do it as one construction project, but you'd have to separate it as a division one would be, you know, maybe relocate the threshold on one end, extend on the other end, and then division two would be the parallel taxiway. Right. So you could still keep the funding separate, yeah. but that yeah. might be a possibility. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys are thinking about it. So that's really appreciated. Um, you know, I'm thinking probably that April timeframe, once we know kind of what the guidance is, if we could have a, have a proposal, you know, here's what we think we want to do over the next five years with this money combined with the IIP money. Here's how we would package it. And then just give the commission a chance to talk it over. Yeah, and mm -hmm. as, as of last Friday, Jeff and Anthony didn't know a whole lot more than what I can I have yeah. reported today. And yeah. uh, as soon as we know, uh, we'll make sure that everybody knows. And Mike and I probably find out at the same time whenever it comes out. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else on this, Mike? That's all I got for that. That's good news. Yeah. Any other discussion from the committee? Maybe we can take like 10 grand of it and have them refly our approaches so we get our circling back. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm bitter about that at all. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes the uh, FAA DOT projects. Uh, next to be airport operations. Um, just under the management heading, the airport frontage area parking lot. Uh, talk to engineering today. They are putting the plan, the uh, plans and specs together once uh, they get those done. Uh, the last few weeks of, of city work has been focused on city council budget meetings. Uh, Tuesday, no, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was our, our capital uh, project presentations to city council. And then um, a week ago, last Saturday, um, uh, was the operations budget. So that's kind of where uh, a lot of the city work resources have been uh, been uh, tabbed. It's just making sure everybody's on on for that. But uh, generally, um, th they thought February again for uh, having a, a pretty decent set of plans and specs for uh, that to be created. It uh, would be would be feasible. Okay. Um, we sure need it. I had a really hard time finding a place to park <laughs> today. Yeah, I had yeah, to park yeah. long term yeah. this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of couple of good charter, uh, nice packed charter planes. Yeah, there's a group of like eight and another group. Uh, actually, yeah, two groups of at least six right yeah. 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 Uh, It doesn't take much anymore to mm. fill up the lots. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the budget goes, that that's my budget report. Presented everything to city council. Uh, Everything went pretty well. No major comments about airport or projects. So, um, uh, don't expect any any real pushback on what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up's discussion on art mural. So I guess Judy, you and I can have a discussion about that or, or update. Uh, we did talk with um, um, Marcia, Lindy, and Marcia today. Yeah. And uh, I think we've got, we adjusted our plans a little bit. Uh, first thing we did is we came up with a concept for fundraising that was not much different than what we did for the simulator. Um, the thinking, so we've got $8,000 approved. We're thinking that wouldn't be enough. So we've, I've come up with a concept and, and you're welcome to poke holes in it. 
um, where we would uh, look for contributors who would want to, you know, give to the project, but in exchange, we would, you know, display their aircraft either prominently or as a background item, depending on how much they gave. Uh, we talked that over if we got full donations plus the grant to be about $20,000. And with that and, and this, this process, uh, Wendy and uh, Marcia suggested that instead of using a request for quote, we use a request for proposal process. And so that in, so once we've got this together, probably in early March, we get together and then put something out to attract maybe some more talent that would have otherwise skipped over this due to the $8,000 budget in the RFQ. Now we've got a little more money to work with. Uh, we also talked about the timing and, uh, you know, we expressed um, kind of our position that we're more concerned about quality and certainty than we are speed because we've got the airport doors coming in. We don't know exactly when they're going to happen. There's no rush to get this done. Um, the only concern we had is do we keep the funding from the uh, um, art advisory committee if we push it off? And they said, nope, that's no problem. We delay a lot of projects anymore. So what we're thinking now is that we would set this up so the work would be done next summer, not this coming summer, so summer 23. So that gives us a little more time. Uh, maybe we put the funding out there a little longer, you know, into April, see what we get back. I have a question, Tyler, for legal. Uh, is there any way we can con construct this fund drive as, as a charitable yeah, already had that discussion. Told you, yeah, so, told you they'd ask. <laughs> and I've talked to Mike and Marsha, and I've also talked to Nicole. Mm -hmm. So how that's traditionally been done with the city is the so the finance sets up a separate account. They accept it, but we don't. We will send letters that say thank you for your you know gift of a hundred dollars to the city for this project, but we don't say on there whether or not it's tax deductible and sort of leave that to the person to sort out with their tax preparer. Now, I do think there's a way to do it, but I think um, you have to do it as an endowment. And I haven't, there is an organization, it's the Community Foundation of Johnson County that does that. I know they indicated that Parks and Rec and I think the library have funds through them. Um, I have not reached out to them but I surely could. They, of course, are going to charge a fee. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I, I think we should look into that because um, you know, many people would be more inclined to give larger amounts if they could do it that mm -hmm. way. Uh, particularly, you know, for example, there are these, this new, f with, with the decline in tax deductibility for charitable donations, uh, a lot of people have these donor advised funds where you can put a big chunk of money into a, a fund. Um, run by a, a, a Fidelity Investments or something, and and you can then direct them, say, I want to give two thousand dollars to this airport foundation for the artwork, but they can only do that if it is a charity, if it is formally a charity, um, and I think there's a lot of people who have money uh, sure. are, are doing things that way now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no problem giving them a call and kind of asking them yeah, what let's, it entails let's do that. to do that and what, you know, how their fees work. I thought when we did fly out, didn't we, didn't we announce that as like a, as a charitable donation? I thought we did. I couldn't find, I couldn't dig up a, a donor letter that we sent out for Fly Iowa. Gotcha. Um, I think real we quickly. just announce um, it has to, there has to be some formal way to recognize it as charity. Yeah, because uh, it's through the IRS code, donations to uh, government entities are tax deductible provided they're for a public purpose. Like uh -huh. uh, you, somebody couldn't give the airport 50 grand and pay my salary and, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, that'd be deductible, but they could give, you know, 20 grand to the park shelter sure. viewing area. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think the request is then if there's anything that is necessary for making this qualify uh, for a charitable gift that would be deductible under the IRS rules, let's make sure we understand it, if we can do it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also want to make sure that we include that language in the flyer so that people understand yeah. what it is and what it is not. Right. And I do think, and you bring up a good point with the donor advised funds, because I think they 
they have some more requirements, I think, than just the typical. Yeah, it has to be some kind of recognized charity. Right. The other thing that we talked about was the the change in the uh, flyer about um, not just specifically saying that we have control over uh, what artwork will be put up, but it, if there's any changes in the future, we also have mm -hmm. the ability to change that. Well, at least I put the lawyer language in there. Um, Jennifer has to sign off. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, just kind of putting in just basically what we did is for the donor selected aircraft, you know, we're saying that, you know, we'll depict uh, a plane that they either owned or personally flew or a relative of theirs owned or personally flew. If it's a high level, if it's prominent, if it's a low level donation, it's more of a background element. But I put some conditions on there saying the airplane had to at least been flown at Iowa City. I mean, at least one landing can take off, right? Sure. Um, you know, I don't want World War II P-51s on the side just because they're cool. There was one based here for a while. <laughs> well, and if there was, if someone owned it, that's part of the history of the airport, then that's awesome. Yeah, that's right. I'd suggest you might want to make the aviator level a thousand then if you want to include the airplane. Okay. Well, I only needed 500 to get to the 20,000, but. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it just depends how many. But, are. you know, I think that's what we've got here is an opportunity um, to set those pricing levels based on what we think the response would be. You know, the higher the level, the fewer uh, aircraft maybe. But on the other hand, we don't know what this is going to cost. Uh, you know, eight thousand dollars is what the advisory committee put out there for us. Uh, they think that's enough to do a kind of a base level job without you know a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. um, if we want to do more than that, you know, having more money would make that possible. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just thinking if it's going to cost that much, you don't want necessarily sixteen airplanes on your right. Well, and it's how, how you know it's a big it's a big uh, yeah. big hanger, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're also going to want to put in some of uh, you know the historic uh, elements of our own, yeah. you know the the like the first flight, uh, the first airmail, uh, maybe um, you know the the United planes that used to fly out of here as an example. So, but I think that's up for the you know the artists to come up with some concepts. Um, you know, let them use their creativity. I mean, we're pretty creative, Absolutely. but um, we're well, for that. If we don't have to have 20 planes, um, then it gives more options of doing some of the history. And I'm, uh, the idea of being able to have something be a thousand dollars instead of 500. I mean, if that, if mm -hmm. you think that would go, it, it would be nice to not have to have it be uh, 20 planes to be able to cover our cost. Yeah, right. So we could easily make that a thousand, and we could probably make the navigator twenty five hundred too, or something. Why not? So what? What are the years of the navigator? Uh, Two thousand for a navigator. Okay. Well, well like How much do you want to give? Uh, I'll set it at whatever that. Well, so you might as well aim high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling uh, Marcia that you know the two thousand dollar level, and I, I pulled down that model airplane that I have with my one eighty two. I think I spent five hundred dollars to get that. Made. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure about that. Yeah. So it's uh, five hundred dollars. So it's not a lot. And then you sold the airplane. I know. You stuck with the model. <laughs> stuck with the model. You make motor you. noises. I do. <laughs> Along with the sixty eight yeah. Camaro I sold. Yeah. And oh, no. the Jeep I sold. Sixty eight Camaro. That hurts. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Ouch. Oh, my heart. <laughs> I have my toys. I play with them. And, uh, <laughs> would it, would it make nice Very nice. Good job. But Judy. Would it make sense to have some place, um, I mean, just like you have your your uh, plane, some place to have like a historical uh, box of some sort that people can put things like that in so that people can see what planes are, are something historical for the Iowa City Airport, other than just pictures of things? So when people come and they're waiting to get on a plane or, or just getting off of one or something, they, they have some time. Um, I like have a display case with yeah. artifacts. Like, with or just like historic planes that were once here, almost a little museum. Plane plane museum. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a little bit of a museum. Yeah. I, would, I think it'd be worth the airport's money to get some more of those. The, the, Iowa, or the people put together the Iowa 100 book. Mm -hmm. 
it'd be probably worth the money to buy more of those books, not to, in hope that they don't walk away, mm -hmm. but to have those in the lobby because those go through the history and it's they're That's really neat, idea. concise, look sharp. Okay. And then um, for people who do have time to sit and read it, yeah. it's really, I mean, it's a really cool deal we put together. We don't have a lot of space for display cases that are. Not really. That's stuff. kind of the. Yeah. You want to talk about spending some of that BIO money on a terminal. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 I want to blow the terminal out by about three or four times its current size, and then we can do that. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, we can, you know, we can maybe take a look around and see if there's a spot we could put a small a small case or and i think i've got a couple of those books left in my office so i can grab those and sure. get them out to the lobby if if we can make this work this being the project and we can get the funds to actually do it it might be neat to get um to to photograph it mm -hmm. and then get that framed and put that on the wall and put numbers next to each of the planes and then have uh, sort of a legend that shows like what the plane is mm -hmm. and maybe put the person's name there and and like yeah yeah if we've got some long that wall way you space. can document it yeah, yeah. If we've got some long yeah. wall space like one of those uh, pictures you see of the stadium yeah exactly mm -hmm. the yeah. landscape views yeah and then you just have like little numbers next to each individual plane and you can identify what it is because exactly. yeah, if we get enough money we can include that as part yeah. of the project yeah so we're expanding the second floor and then we're getting more wall so we can do all that, right? There you go. There you go. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. There might be more than $8,000. Well, we're talking BIO. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah we'll have money. But the, no, it, I think that would just, <laughs> yeah, it'd be in the probably five, six, seven million dollars for the kind of work I want to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, um, if there's any more discussion on this, I think one of the things we wanted to do is uh, get your feedback. Um, we're not maybe as under the same time crunch we thought we were, so we could maybe even delay this another month. But um, you know, if, if people are generally good with this, why don't we soak on it? And uh, maybe I'll send an email out um, and then just see if anyone's got any new suggestions. I mean, thousand dollars was your suggestion. Uh, Navigator, should we set that up higher? What do you think? I guess. To need to specify what they get for navigating all they get is prominent display of the plane versus background of uh, the element of the plane so okay yeah you just need to say that it does it does, it does. Okay. yeah it says uh it says uh background and prominent. and how are we distributing this communication to the community member so one thing we could do is what we did with the simulator. We've got a list of all the area pilots. That's one pool of potential donors, and we could send out flyers that way. The other uh, is we could also find, um, I'll call it patrons, you know, users of the airport that aren't necessarily pilots uh, to see if we could send things out to them. So we need a little help with that probably from, from you, Matt. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then we could also put the link on our website, obviously. Um, although I, I doubt that's going to get the uh, attention that a mailer would get. Um, and uh, maybe we could also do something for the city announcements. Um, the city also puts out, you know, daily things that come out from the city. We could put something out that, you know, we're taking uh, donations for public art. Don't we have a, a conference coming up in February that might set something like that? April. April. That it's going to be in here in Iowa City, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's the state aviation conference I think you're thinking of. A couple other comments, too. Is we might be able to shoot just a little bit higher. And like, so we've got the older airplane and the newer airplane. You know, mm -hmm. I'm guessing it'll be a progression, but right. I can picture like Cirrus aircraft throwing at least, throwing at least five or six thousand dollars of one of the more modern airplanes with one of theirs. Mm -hmm. So the nice part is you don't have to worry about it being tied to a specific person. Yeah, you know I mean, well, like, let's make it five thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking through. I can see a they got a whole hangar door. For 5, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guarantee Jed Hay will do something. I don't know what I can't speak without talking to everybody else too, but. Yeah. But for us, I mean, $2,000 would be nothing for that. So we'd probably do at least that. Okay. Yeah. It might be worth considering limiting the number of 
So we've talked Navigator about and yeah, we've talked about first come first serve. Yeah. Um, and so I, we haven't really talked about, okay, what happens if you're not the first, right? So we haven't figured out how many we can put on there yet because we haven't talked with the artist. Is yeah. it one, two, three? Is it 20? Um, you know, I could envision, for example, at one end of the mural, there might be, um, uh, you know, a parking ramp where we park, you know, 20 airplanes. <laughs> and that's how they get to be, you know, minor elements, right? They're not in the sky necessarily, but they're part of the, part of the mural. Um, and again, I think we need to have a discussion with the artists first to find out how many could be incorporated. Um, and then what happens if you're willing to be a, a navigator, you make that pledge, um, but we don't have, you're not, you're like fifth on the list, right? Yeah. Uh, I think what we do then is give them the option to say, well, you can go forward with this at that level without the plane, or you can drop down to a, uh, an aviator level. We also have the south and north ends of the building. Right? Mm -hmm. We could we could wrap oh, yeah, right. around. Yeah, and we again. This the more money you get, the more you can do. Yeah, exactly. So, as Mark should caution, though, you have, you don't want a project that's going to be so big you're not going to get artists to do it. Right. Yeah. And you don't want something that's going to like drag on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, it's something we want to make sure it's kind of done. You know, done once. So. You're, yeah. You almost wonder if you should, but I guess just a plan. You almost wonder if you shouldn't have a, a general idea. of is it a fifty thousand dollar project? How many airplanes we need to incorporate before we get started? And that's what we don't know yet. Yeah, that's yeah. what we don't know. You know, I was just kind of putting together. I'll call this it really a, cool. yeah. a hypothesis of around twenty grand, um, but I just don't know. And that's one of the. I'd say it's one of the the gaps we've got right now. So, you know, maybe we start with this first round of pledging, and then we don't collect, but we got an idea of how how much the interest is. We then go back to the artist and say, here's how much we've got to work with. The more planes you get in the more money you can do the more things you can do um and then we go back to the donors and say okay um you know this is what we've been able to do but then starting to set those limits um uh, you know and again maybe for maybe a uh, for a uh, i'll say a, a navigator uh, donor um if they don't if they're not like first in line they at least get the uh they at least become a minor element a background element right they're going to get that because they're first in line. So if you think about like first, second, and third class boarding, right? They got bumped out of first class, but now they're number one in second class. And so they're going, they're going to get that and they're going to bump everyone else down. I think that's fine. I think I would make that clear in the mailer. The mailer, yeah. I, I think that yeah, disclosing that I think is, yeah. transparency is probably a good thing. Would you yeah. want to see about having the, the city put it on one of those um, um, ne next door? that goes to all of the, the neighborhoods? Yeah, I, I can- Some of the things? I can work with Shannon and get it out on all of the channels in terms of uh, general press release next door. We've got our social media, the city's got their social media. Uh, so I think we, we can get that taken care of fairly easily. Mike, how much did it cost just to paint those buildings blue? Just trying to get a frame of reference. I mean, That's a good question. I mean, was it- didn't we spend twenty five thousand just painting them? It was, I think, it was like eight grand a building so for just, a total of twenty five, twenty four. So just um, masking it, painting it one color with a spray can. Yeah. Just imagining, not just can, but spray can. I'm imagining it to be a lot more expensive, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You know I, what? Um, I would think so. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, that's why I said I don't. The eight thousand money, eight thousand dollars that the um, the public art council gave us was seed money. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would expect that it would cost probably two or three times that at a minimum. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of how much can we get. And like you said, we might get a tremendous amount of interest in something like this, yeah. where we get fifty thousand yeah. dollars. I just don't know. Yeah. So what I can do is I can try to come up with a disclosure and that I'll call it the priority boarding uh, concept. That way people understand that we don't yet know how many spots we're going to have until we talk with the artist. If you're willing to make that pledge, but you don't make the first pick, you'll at least be guaranteed a seat you know, in the second round uh, on the aviator level. And the sooner you get in, the sooner you get in, the better. That's a hundred check. I never really didn't even know there was one in the flag. Yeah, never that seen is. one. Huh. That's kind of neat. Um, yeah, I, with, the, with the, a disclosure of like the sooner you get in, the better, I think, you know, would probably help. Yeah, I'll call it the boarding process or priority boarding process. But would we still give the March 4th ending then? 
I think we can give them some time after the discussion we had today. Um, but I don't know. We'll talk to Marsha again. I think we still want to get something out there so we can start talking with artists. Yeah. So that's that's what I was thinking. If if you can if we can get sort of the general thing written mm -hmm. and and start getting it out, then we'll have a better feeling for when they when they want to do the RFP. Mm -hmm. And when would you be talking to the artists? Well, the request for the request, oh, sorry, the request for quote process had artists submitting uh, now out to I think March fourth, and then we would close the the quote, sorry, the request for quote process then and see who the artists were. The reason we're changing is that that was based on an eight thousand dollar budget, and you know, can you do it for this much? Um, with this concept, now we're talking about a much bigger budget and, and we don't know exactly what, because we're not telling them what we want. We're saying, what can you do for this? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we got to talk with Marsha about again. So I think this all gets pushed off a month until that RFP process gets defined. Okay. So that gives us about a month, um, probably come back to the council then and then have a, a real firm plan in place. And I'll, I kind of propose that we go out from mid-February to probably the end of March, early April, something like that. I'd say six, eight weeks is all you need. Because you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get those first come, first serves in the first two, three weeks anyway. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yes. Sound good. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, follow up with Marsha. The other thing we have is that um, it'd be nice to get as much as we can done with Marsha before she retires. That too. She retires in April, right? Uh, end of March, I think it was. Yeah. Okay, end of March. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? I really appreciate the feedback. If you want to give me an email, me and Judy an email, um, you know, we would take that and incorporate it. All right. Yeah. Good work, guys. Thank you. Very nice. All, Come on. All right. Uh, I think that's enough discussion on the art. Um, I've got no update on fuel flowage fees this month. Um, and I think we'll, we'll talk more in our next one on one about this, too. And Matt, we've got a one on one coming up in April. So we'll talk again about that. All right. Events. Um, first, uh, autocross event is in April. Um, I did check my calendar for that, but I unfortunately forgot to throw on the agenda. Um, outside of that, um, um, the snow removal. <laughs> the snow yeah. removal. Um, I guess uh, we are planning, uh, we are hosting the uh, Iowa Aviation Conference this year. It is at the Graduate. Um, had a minor heart attack this afternoon because uh, uh, Iowa has enacted human trafficking laws, which uh, uh, among other things, say public money can't be used at hotels and conference centers that don't have a, a human trafficking program, and they were not listed as as a hotel and, and center that had their program in place, but they do. So <laughs> we got the sort of uh, we got the copy of their certificate this afternoon. So um, crisis averted. <laughs> So they're certified human traffickers? That yeah, right? they're certified anti-human traffickers. Oh, um, I got it. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, April uh, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, April 13th is primarily the classroom day. That's when all of the sessions are. Uh, April 12th, um, if you're an attendee, you can come down to Hatchet Jacks and throw, uh, throw axes at Lloyd. Um, and then April 14th, we're going to have a tour out here with OPL. Um, then kind of an airport information general Q and A type uh, morning before uh, for whoever's left and before everybody scatters again. And just all Iowa airports. Uh, primarily Iowa airports might be some random commission member level people uh, from different cities, uh, but primarily it's airport operators that attend this. And what's the dates again? Uh, April twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. You gonna send us anything on that? I mean, did you want sure. us here for any of it? Um, 
I don't necessarily need any. If, if you want to attend, just to attend. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's again, it's a, it's it's the same conference that I've gone to, like in Des Moines and Dubuque and Sioux City. Um, and that's the the general level. So they're the uh, that's the conference we're just we're we're hosting it this year. So it's certainly something. So it's in our backyard. Um, is there a fee for attending? Uh, there is a fee to attend. I think registration is. I'd have to double check. I don't remember what you got. Well, let us know next time. <laughs> So 12 through 14th, right? Yeah. Sponsorships, we're looking for sponsorships too. So, um, I've sent it up to the IPAA people. I don't know if, if everybody's gotten it, but like Kaylee, uh, Kayla, and Bill, and those guys have gotten it since it's an IPAA. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the, the, the sponsorship letters are in the works. I haven't talked to the, the replacement Kayla yet. So, um, I forget his name. Um, whoever's taking taking the role is uh, while she's on leave. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that. All right. Next up, Matt. I asked Matt to give us uh, not only his normal update but also an overview of Jet Air's strategic plan. Sure. We get a chance to maybe learn a little more about our uh, most important partner here. Sure. You should be able to share your screen. Possible, you want to try it here. So I'm gonna give a background at the same time. Uh, share screen, here we go. Let me share just the whole screen. It should be, cool. there you go. Perfect. Yay. Perfect. Great. Awesome. So um, I'm going to start out just by giving kind of a quick uh, Google Earth tour of Jet Air's stuff that we have, that we have going on. Now, obviously, everybody here knows of Jet Air in Iowa City. Um, we've got on a daily basis here. Well, when I first came, we had about four or five employees here on a daily basis. And now we're running closer to, uh, well, 30 almost, 20, 20 to 30 almost, uh, depending on the day and stuff like that. Uh, and then that's not really counting a lot of our pilots and things. Uh, so we've been in Iowa City since 2001. Uh, in that time, we built uh, this hangar here. And then uh, this one is not showing up on Google Earth yet. Uh, but that one next to, oh, it's delayed. Right? I should look at that. Um, Looks like it's half built. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's coming. <laughs> It's coming. Uh, uh, we've been in, in Burlington, Iowa since 2000. It doesn't appear to be it's, going. Uh, it's, it's a little delayed. A little yeah. delayed. I just noticed it's the jet air interview. It's down there. It seems to be. Oh, I wonder, wonder which one I'm on. I was, I was on the city, uh, Iowa City Airport public network. So not, not jet air is back up again. Okay. I wonder, I wonder if I switch if it'll drop off. Um, so this is Gelsberg. Uh, we've been in Gelsberg since 1969. Uh, is where Harold founded it. And um, over there, it's been kind of interesting over the years. You know, Gelsberg as a community has, has changed a lot as factories have moved out of town and things like that. So it's really not a place you'd picture an aviation business to be based. We've got a lot of mechanics and things that have been there for well over a lot of a couple of them over 30 years a lot of them over 20 years and uh customer base since airplanes are are mobile they can come in from from all over the country and really all over the world um we also do some aircraft leasing up in wisconsin at fox valley technical college we lease uh, a couple of skyhawks up there and then um it's not going to keep up so i'm just going to keep going uh and we also do some aircraft leasing down in uh, uh, St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, which is a great place to visit uh, <laughs> and check up on things. Uh, I hope it loads. Yeah, there it is. So what are you, what are you leasing in St. Croix? So in St. Croix, actually, if we zoom in, it's kind of neat. Uh, these two citations are down there uh, on the ramp. You can kind of see them. There you go. Uh, so we have, it's, it's actually neat because you go to this island and, you know, you, when you're in Miami, you're halfway there. It's a long ways away. Mm-hmm. And um, we lease them Citation Bravos and one old Citation Two for Air Medical. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this, it's a, 
air ambulance operator. There's another hangar that's for theirs too is is off uh the, the on the left hand side there. A lot of their facilities got decimated in the hurricanes. Uh, but what they do is they run patients back and forth from the U.S. Virgin Islands and from basically any of the islands in the Caribbean back and forth to Miami, mm -hmm. just because there's not great medical care accessible down there. So they're based in um, St. Croix, but then also in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of neat going down there to visit because you go down to the ramp and we've sold airplanes down there and things, but it's kind of neat because you look out across the ramp and most of the airplanes are from Iowa City. <laughs> that are, like, all, like every airplane in view one time I was this weird feeling just, I've been here yeah, yeah. you know so it's kind of a kind of a neat thing yeah. we're gonna need uh, an actual tour yeah I think yeah, so I think so That's yeah cool. exactly yeah you need to, need to travel yeah. down yeah junk it in. <laughs> and it's too bad that the rest of it's running slow because I've also so I put kind of points on um all these red dots around the world are places that we bought or sold airplanes in um so we've imported or exported uh, and like I say, it's kind of a bummer because you won't be able to see probably uh, Europe. We did a, done a whole bunch across Europe, uh, which is where my screen is now. And then uh, down we had um, Europe, Israel, Kuwait, uh, South Korea, China. But I thought it was kind of neat. I was looking on here, uh, Australia and New Zealand was kind of neat because the airplanes we sold were actually visible. Oh, really? uh, on the ground there, two steermen, which there's only like three steermen in New Zealand. So you know that that's the one, that's the airport. I actually went down and visited them uh, since then. Uh, let's see if it pulls up. It's coming. It's, <laughs> it's, it's going to get there. I tried to put the pin right on the spot for that one, but. Um, I don't see a yellow. Do they move them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there they are. Mm. On my screen. Yeah, it might be a second uh, for you. But anyway, so it's kind of a small, small world in yeah, the aviation community. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's kind of a background of you know, we do these aircraft sales is a big part of our business. Um this will open up here real quick and we can just zoom through it. Um so out of Iowa City, a big part of what we do is aircraft charter. So you saw two of our jets just came back um, in the last couple hours. One of them was from uh, Sioux Falls and taking a team of doctors out there, uh, taking Sioux Falls to Sioux City. And then um, uh, then we had another one that came back, and I can't remember where that one's from, but on a daily basis, stuff is always coming and going. Um, on aircraft sales, I talked about that. You know, we're buying and selling airplanes all over the world. We do like an import process where we bring airplanes in, fix them up, resell them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people we work with all over the place. Uh, the maintenance side in, in Iowa City, we're a Cirrus service center and a Gilbert or a Cessna service center. Uh, we manage airplanes, we do training, and uh, we do air medical quite a bit too, where we um, uh, take out seats in the airplanes and put in a stretcher system. And we'll haul patients. Uh, a big contract we have is, is for Mayo Clinic, where whenever their airplane is down, we send ours up there, and then um, uh, their medical team staffs our airplane essentially. Uh, and so we'll we'll just stay up there for a week or two weeks when they have scheduled maintenance. Um, or if they're not wanting to take their King Air out of their service area for too long, they'll have us do like a long distance trip in the jets. So we'll go from up there to wherever. I mean, we've been to Seattle with them and all sorts of places with them. Um, so this is a snapshot. You've got the two maintenance shops, one's here, one's in Galesburg, three FBOs. Uh, on charter, in terms of jets, we've got uh, eight citations we're running now, uh, 10 plus training airplanes. I say that because we have some sales airplanes and inventory that are probably gonna be converted to training airplanes and things like that. Um, uh, the sales team, they do, uh, it was my brother and I and a couple of the guys, about 45 airplanes a year, uh, either buying or selling. And we're up to a little over 80 employees now. And that counts some, you know, part-time flight instructors and part-time people plowing snow and stuff like that too, but but um, but quite a few people. Um, the charter fleet is are all those jets on there. Uh, and the training fleet, just to give an idea, is this needs updated as well, um, but 
but there's a lot of Cessna 172s mm -hmm. and in Gelsberg, uh, they're planning on this year launching to do, we have the Stearman, uh, planning to do more tailwheel transition training in the, I uh, have a Satavri over there at the moment, but the goal is to be able to have something where they can get somebody their tailwheel endorsement and then get them checked out in the Stearman mm. um, to kind of take them through that. Mm. Um, that kind of sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it would be a lot of fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as we look at growth and things like that, we have the current market conditions to talk about just briefly, and then we'll look at, uh, so headwinds in terms of things that, that slow us down a little bit. Uh, here in Iowa City, the one is the runway length, which we're working on. That that would be a big change for the airport uh, and for our operation when they're able to get a little bit longer. Um, it works right now in good weather conditions, uh, but like in bad weather conditions, this last winter storm, I had uh, seven jets sitting at Cedar Rapids and, you know, just for three days, just because. And for this coming storm tomorrow, like tonight, the airplanes that come home, other than those that just landed, uh, we'll be starting to to uh, basically position up there when they leave for trips. And what's the issue with the link in the winter? Um, just the ability to get the snow removal. Uh, basically, the Cedar Rapids snow removal budget is is just phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so well, that's like, on a runway link. Just on, on a, well, yeah, it just if it's contaminated, mm -hmm. uh, we have to add exponentially to our landing distances and takeoff distances. Oh, okay. So, and it's so hard to know, you know, because sometimes you'll treat it perfectly. You'll do everything just right. And then it'll start sleeting and now it's ice, you know, or whatever it might be. And so, because most of our stuff can't be canceled, you know, we, there's not, and there's no backup options out there. We, we just can't have a maybe. So we always have to move, move stuff around and stuff like that. So the amount of link we're talking about adding would be enough for those it, conditions? It would definitely help. Okay. Cause right now, I mean, right now everything's working fine, you know, 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. And when you, the biggest struggle is we also can't circle. Mm -hmm. So, cause the seven end would be no problem most of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still can't land an ice. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to have contamination oh, yeah. and right. still be able to land because you you have longer you have you have a, you have longer runway with right. right. from the seven you got the threshold yeah. you got the threshold yeah. at the end you can use yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so so that's that's one thing that'll definitely help uh, but but just being able to reliably do it office space is another thing we're bumping up against now is we were having a discussion we had hired somebody else for sales we're like well do we have a move. Uh, back to Gelsberg, or do we send them to Iowa City, or where, where are we going to put them? You know, just send them to Gelsberg for now, you know. Um, so that was one. That's one thing that we're kind of bump up against a little bit. Um, and then the other things, the things that there's not much that can be done about in terms of low aircraft inventory. Things right now are in such a, a state where, where if you wanted to go out and buy airplanes and grow exponentially, you just they aren't physically there. Um, supply train constraints. There's you know, obviously, I, I was mentioned to Ryan earlier, you know, we've been waiting on tires for one type of airplane since October. Have 11 on order and just got two in, and and we may or may not get more. <laughs> you know, they, they won't tell us. Um, pilot shortage, of course. Fuel costs are going up exponentially. That's kind of across the board on everything. Um, but in terms of tailwinds, you know, we've been in business now for 50-plus years. I've uh, got a really good reputation, a very strong customer base. Um, so from that standpoint, we have um, something that a lot of aviation companies don't have. A lot of aviation companies go big and they advertise like crazy and then they're just gone. You know, they just didn't actually make it. Um, so we've got a lot of reliability there. Uh, limited competition. The regulatory world has gotten to be such, so bogged down that I think there's like 2,500 plus applications for 135 certificates, like in waiting, mm -hmm. and the people just can't get them. I mean, they're, and they'll never be approved, probably. Huh. Um, so, you know, people are out, they'll buy certificates or something like that. But I mean, launching one is almost do not you, realistic. Do you also, I mean, do you, do you fit like in a certain, I'll say, niche, like, you know, when I think of an FBO that, is doing this kind of thing, I think of signature, but oh sure. I also think of signature as kind of being at a at a, at a, a don't bother me kind of level. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's about as polite as you could have yeah. said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, do you do you serve like, you know, if you think about like you know the bomb and pop FBO or the signatures, you know, is there you find that there's a, a good market in that uh, that 
kind of that space that you uh, compete in? There is. It's it's a it's a difficult market to navigate because uh, uh, because you're dealing with such a wide range of customers. You know, you you'll have somebody who's got the oldest, poorest condition Cessna 150 in the world, and to them, it's 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 the most important thing in their life. And you've got somebody else who has something that's that all they do is sit in the back of and they don't know anything about it and they don't really care. You know, mm -hmm. and so you're navigating that dynamic. Yeah. Um, we are in that middle and you're right. And and uh, the only way that we're able to make it work is that our ownership, uh, me and my brother and Chris are all uh, active pilots and actively interested in, in all that gamut. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, there's definitely, we definitely have, room for growth and the fact that we're able to take care of people on both ends of the spectrum and understand both of those uh, dynamics, knowing that it is still a problem. It's still hard, you know, because you, you've got to gear your parts of the business to do different things. But, but, um, but there is definitely right now, anybody can grow if they're, if they have an airplane available. I mean, they, they will get calls and they will fly or they will, you know, whatever it might be at the moment. But uh, now isn't really necessarily the time where people drop out. It's when the market does ultimately go different directions. Um, the streamlined fleet, you know, I showed the picture. We had all have all jets now, um, which was a tough decision because of that. You know, we've always kind of taken care of the gamut. At one time, we had five different types of airplanes uh, uh, from piston twins and turboprops and jets. And, um, and we've slowly let go of all those other segments and just focused on the jets and um, we still take calls from the other all those original customers and we broker their flights to other operators who have king ears and stuff like that um so we, we've tried not really we haven't lost i don't know that we've lost any of them actually because we brokered those trips uh, but we found that 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 was something that helped us to grow quite a bit was even though our fleet size we've had at times we've had 12 airplanes uh on a charter certificate before uh, but with eight airplanes we have uh, we flew almost 50 percent more last year than we ever have mm -hmm. in any year you know on charter mm -hmm. and a lot of it is just you had a common fleet you had pilots who could fly both airplanes they were able to just keep going they're common parts we had everything so I mean, we were able to crank out way more than we would have been able to otherwise especially with supply chain shortages uh we were able to keep flying and a lot of people couldn't um uh, so that's us I, I mentioned already strong customer demand i mean it, it, airplanes that were worth forty thousand dollars are now selling for 80 and airplanes that were two million dollars are now selling for three yeah. it's just unbelievable and that's all the last uh basically year and a half or so um, it does make it difficult, though. So a lot of our airplanes that are on our certificate are, are lease backs. We're owned by businesses and individuals, and we, we lease them and charter them on our commercial certificate. Every one of those people is getting calls every day saying, "Hey, you're gonna sell your airplane." So you know that's. Uh, in fact, one of our one of our jets on our certificate uh, last two weeks ago, they called and said, "Hey, we got this offer for our airplane." And so we bought it. <laughs> we stepped up and bought it. And I was not planning on buying it. Then within 24 hours, we owned it. You know, that's just how it goes. But but it, we have the business for it. It's not a concern. It's just it's just a different time than what we would have anticipated. Um, so, in terms of growth guidelines, we look forward. Uh, uh, these are not common in the aviation industry, but. Uh, but we, because we tend, tend to be a lot more conservative than most, but uh, remain flexible. So we, um, uh, if you were to ask us, you know, well, what's your budget for marketing next year? Or what's your, you know, what's your plan for purchasing a certain number of airplanes? And uh, we absolutely do not have one. Uh, we just go purely by what the opportunities are. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that's even, that's held true all the way through. I mean, I don't think Iowa City 20 years ago was on our radar until we did it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the same thing with Burlington and things like that. Um, but that's allowed us to be able to, to kind of grow in unique ways. Um, and we aren't just out blindly doing things because it was in the plan. Um, slow and steady wins the race. That I always tell everybody, everybody we always, 
you know, as a pilot, you always want to fly bigger, faster, farther, and you see opportunities come up and things like that. And oh man, this operator looks great. You know, they painted all their airplanes with a red stripe, and they've got you know all that kind of stuff. And I just, you know, as soon as somebody starts pulling out airplanes that are all painted the exact same color and all that stuff, those are the guys who go bankrupt, just about guaranteed almost every time. You know, um, just because their priorities are in different spots. You know, um, and then also we all, always have to remember that we're in the signature industry. When I first started was two thousand and. Uh, six, 2006. Um, sorry, I was only 16 at the time, but 2006, 7, 8, and then the, just the massive collapse and values and changes. I mean, it doesn't matter how prepared you are, it's one of the industries that changes the fastest. Um, and so, anyway, that's kind of uh, something just that we always have to keep in mind when we're, when we're doing stuff, is that oftentimes the change will happen long before. Uh, a lot of other industries are affected. Mm. Um, so in terms of our growth goals, uh, because we don't have a super strong, concise plan of what, what tomorrow looks like, because we don't know exactly what those opportunities will be, a lot of it is pretty conservative in terms of growth goals. Um, but on a daily basis, we're seeking to continue to, to um, bolster our charter um, whether that's through extra aircraft or just keeping the ones we have going faster, farther. Um, aircraft sales and leasing. The leasing part that I mentioned for Fox Valley and the Down and Caribbean, that's kind of a new wing of the business, actually. It's within the last five years we started doing that. And uh, that is something that we're trying to grow. Um, you know, obviously, it depends on how many airplanes you can buy. Uh, but, but we found that a lot of like flight training organizations you know, they don't know, they don't have a solid plan of what their demand will be. So owning the airplanes, we're able to do some leasing in those situations. And same thing with, you know, air medical and charter operators and things. Um, maintenance and avionics. Uh, we um, just are always continuing to grow in there. Um, in terms of new market segments, Cirrus is not a new mar market segment, but uh, we did go ahead and buy uh, an SR-20 and we're starting to get familiar with that a little bit more on the flight side. And we're potentially going to uh, investigate further, maybe doing the Cirrus Training Center stuff, which will require a newer airplane uh, because they have to have your latest avionics and mm. stuff like that to do, to do that. But um, that is a market that we need to get into. It's, they've been more than more than sixty percent of the new airplane sales uh, for single engine airplanes have been Cirrus airplanes, for like the last five plus years. Um, so that's something we're wanting to grow in. And then the Antiques and Warbirds um, have in Gelsberg, which is the home of the Steering Flying uh, for the last 50, 50 years now. Um, gives us kind of a unique avenue there. And it's a pretty quiet place to be able to do Warbird type training and stuff. So uh, we have the Steerman. We, we actually at the moment have a T6, uh, whether or not that sticks around and not what that looks like. Uh, it is something that they're wanting to get into more on the sales side and, and everything. Um, uh, we, because of the, the pilot thing, you know, we're trying to come up with a bit of a stronger pipeline for pilots from the standpoint of, uh, you know, a lot of the guys that we have, uh, shouldn't say a lot, but a lot of the guys that we've brought up through have been flight instructors for us and worked their way into charter. And, and uh, we, we want to try to figure out how to, how to usher those people along better, even from the standpoint of taking them straight from being a line service technician all the way through um, and trying to make it a little bit more of a formalized program to be able to fill, fill that because as, as we've got a couple of guys now who are ambitious, they're great, they got interest in learning to fly and they're on line service and, and those people have worked their way through before. So now we're trying to figure out exactly how do we do that uh, just to get them all the way up in there. Um, and then we're always willing to evaluate additional locations and partnerships. Um, we don't have any sort of anything imminent at the moment, but we're always looking at stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then anyway, that's basically all that I had to present, but I don't know if there's any questions or anything like that. Nice yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, on the maintenance report, I didn't pass that out, but basically we just plowed snow.
<laughs> and we'll, that's the main thing. And you're going to do it again. And, and we're going to do it again. again. Yeah. yeah, and again. Yeah. Yeah. We're lucky to have you in this airport as the FBO. Yeah. yeah. It's been a great spot. I mean, that's that's a lot of our growth has been here. That's why we, you know, we've invested a lot to try to be here and to keep things going. And, uh, and it's worked out really well. And the community has been good and, you know, from working with the university and different people like that. But um, but the airport's been great to work with too because we, like I say we built hangars and stuff like that that help uh, jet air, but help the airport and, and uh, it's been a good partnership. Well, you know, you're talking about office space and you know we've we've talked about even a, a restaurant, you know, sort of sure. high in the sky sorts of things. And I, I just wonder if we should, you know, really have expansion of the terminal building on our radar uh, with this money coming. You could at least you could at least fund some preliminary work. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it could and again it might require some different sources or, or ways of getting funding, but you know, it's a discussion we kind of kept off, but you know, given you know some of your need and some of the growth and kind of what we're getting under our belt now on the air side, uh, you know, when when would be the time to start having that discussion? So, could you expand the building a little bit this way towards the maintenance hangar? I imagine you could. Well, you may almost be easier off expanding the maintenance hangar office or something like that because mm -hmm. you got a newer building to mm -hmm. a newer building to add on to without I mean it's still 20 years old mm -hmm. but but um because a lot of our stuff is now back office stuff you know, our controllers here on this side of the river our, our accounts payable is on this side of the river now you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I say this other river is in Iowa City as yeah. opposed to in Galesburg. No? It's the side of Mississippi. Yeah. It's Yeah. Great. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, any reports from commission members? I guess Electra, you and I could report on our visit to city council a couple of weeks ago. So why, why don't you go ahead and share? Um, we just attended the meeting. We presented ourselves and kind of um, talk a little bit about what 2020, 2020 and 2021 has been for the airport. Oh my gosh, my camera is going crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I believe that was pretty much it, what we did. Yeah. But that gave Electra and me a chance to go to uh, Murphy's and spend about an hour and a half to get to know each other. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. So, any other commission member reports? Okay. All right. Um, staff report. Uh, Matt and I also walked through kind of our, our budget process earlier today. Um, just uh, getting Matt a little bit more exposed on how how we budget things and, and how little control we really have over the budget we have <laughs> um, for those that have been on the commission i think everybody but electra has been through that process so um uh, but uh yeah no it, uh i can say just working with matt and jenner over the years uh it's been a phenomenal relationship and, and obviously the, one of my goals is to maintain that and keep it going and you know doing what we can to either you know to attract people or develop new things hangers office space whatever it takes to uh, get more activity down here because more activity means more revenue and puts the airport in just that much of a better spot um that's true all right good appreciate that yeah okay um next regular meeting scheduled for february 10th is that right february 10th all right. I don't think I've got any conflicts. I should be here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. I'll be here. I'll be there too. I'll be there as far as I know. Yeah, one list. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes our agenda. Do we have any motions for adjournment? I move we adjourn. I second. All right, we have a motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you for attending. Thanks, everyone.